Hi, John here. Today we're going to look at a natural draft cooling tower and I'm going to try to explain to you what it is and how it works in about a minute. So let's go to the base of the cooling tower here. This whole grey area is a reservoir full of water. The water is drawn through a lower pipe here to a power station. The water is then used to cool steam to condensate. It comes back at a slightly elevated temperature through this pipe here and is discharged through spray nozzles. The spray nozzles then spray onto fill, which is a large heat exchanger, where the water is brought into contact with air over a large cross-sectional area. This means there is a very large heat transfer between the water and the air. The water drops out of the fill and into the reservoir again. Notice that the water has been cooled by the air. We know the water dropped out and back into the reservoir, but the air itself, because it's been heated by the water, is going to rise. It is less dense than ambient air. Because it's less dense, it's going to rise through the tower. The shape of the tower itself is going to accelerate that rise and it's going to be discharged out of the top of the tower. This is known as the stack effect. Hot air rises, cold air sinks, or any air that's more dense will sink and any hot air will rise. Because the hot air has been drawn out of the top, the cooler air or the ambient air is going to be drawn in through the base. As it's drawn in through the base, it's going to be drawn upwards and pass through the fill again to replace the warm air which has already been drifting out and up through the cooling tower. And this process continues on and on. The more air that's expelled through the top of the cooling tower, the more air that's drawn in through the base of the cooling tower. This provides all our cooling requirements to the power station. And that's essentially how a natural draft cooling tower works. Please drop me a line if you've got any questions or comments. Thanks very much for your time.